Hello and welcome to Biology Unit 1 Homeostasis. This video is just what the title says, all about homeostasis. This is something we touched upon briefly in the video for what is biology, and as promised, now we're going to get into it much more deeper. So as a reminder, we are all made of cells. All living things are made of cells. And the cell is the smallest unit of a living organism. And the purpose of cells is to be the basic unit of structure and function in all living things. There are some cells that perform a variety of different jobs and have a lot of different things they can do. And then there are some cells that are very specialized, such as bone cells and blood cells and muscle cells, which are all uniquely suited to perform a particular function. That means they have one job and only one job and they're very good at it. And those specialized cells will group up and form tissues. Tissues are a group of cells that perform a single function. So those specialized cells are performing a single function, but they're doing it as one large group. And when they do that, they are called a tissue. There's four types of tissue. There's binding or connective tissue. There's muscle tissue, which controls voluntary and involuntary movement. There's epithelial tissue, which has to do with protection, absorption, excretion or pushing out of materials. And then there's nervous tissue, which is made up of specialized cells whose function involves receiving and transmitting nerve impulses or messages. Finally, when you take those tissues, that have one function and mix them together with other tissues with a different function, you get organs and organ systems. Organ is a group of different types of tissues that work together to perform a single function or several related functions. For example, your lungs are made of epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue, and muscle tissue, all working together to perform one function, breathing. If any one of those tissues doesn't do its job, you stop breathing. That's an organ. Now an organ system is when you have a variety of organs all working together to perform ever more complicated tasks. For example, the brain and the spinal cord are two different organs, but they work very closely together. In fact, they're fairly inseparable. If one goes down, the other one's gonna be affected to form an organ system. And there are many, many different organ systems. The digestive system, the excretory, the nervous, all these systems you see on the screen. In this video, we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about all the different kinds of organ systems, uh, but just know that there are many working in your body all at the same time and often interacting with each other. For example, the respiratory system. The respiratory system exchanges carbon dioxide and oxygen gases with the environment. So carbon dioxide and oxygen coming in, going out. Your respiratory system manages that. It's an organ system because there are multiple organs involved between your lungs and your mouth and your throat. It also works very closely with the circulatory system, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute. And again, its function is the site of gas exchange. And the most important location for where these gases are exchanged is the alveoli which is located at the ends of the bronchioles if you look very closely at this diagram right here. Now the circulatory system is, is very closely related to the respiratory system. The respiratory system helps get the gases in and out of your body, but those gases often need to circulate throughout the rest of your body. Either one part of your body needing to get them to the respiratory system to get them out of your body, or gases that you bring in and you need to get them to the rest of your body, like oxygen needs to go everywhere. Well, the circulatory system is how your body takes the gases that your respiratory system brings into your body and then actually gets it to all the parts of your body that the respiratory system doesn't reach. So again, there are multiple organs involved. It delivers oxygen and nutrients to all the body cells and transports carbon dioxide to the lungs and waste products to the excretory system. So the circulatory system will not only just circulate through your body, but it'll actually take things from the respiratory 
through the circulatory and into some other system. And the heart is the engine of all this. Your heart pumping keeps the circulatory system going, which keeps important gases, nutrients, all the stuff that your body needs flowing through your body so that if any organ or organ system in your body needs something, the circulatory system makes sure whatever it needs gets to it and gets to it in a timely fashion. So how does this tie into homeostasis? Well, homeostasis, if you remember, describes the relatively constant physical and chemical conditions that organisms maintain despite changes in internal and external environments. So all of your systems, like your respiratory, your circulatory, excretory, all these different systems, they have a kind of a primary way of behaving, but sometimes things happen that forces them to change. Like for example, if you get scared, your heart starts racing and starts pumping faster because you need more energy because you need to react. You need to run away or you need to fight or you need to jump or duck or punch or something. Uh, but that means you need to react fast, but that means you're going to use energy faster. So your circulatory system, your heart needs to make sure that your energy, all the nutrients that fuel it, is pumping through fast enough to keep up with how fast you're going to be using it. But before I get too deep into examples, let's clarify further what homeostasis is. Again, it's maintaining balance. And how it maintains balance is through something that's called feedback inhibition or negative feedback. This is the process in which a stimulus, a stimulus is something that uh, gets you excited, gets you scared, uh, something that causes a reaction. Any reaction at all caused by something that's happening to you, that thing happening to you is stimulus. So when stimulus produces a response that opposes the original stimulus. So I just used the word stimulus like a whole bunch of times. So what am I talking about? So imagine you've got the thermostat on at home. Thermostat maintains balance. What balance? Well, whatever temperature you set, that's the temperature it's trying to maintain. But a number of stimuli, stimulus, is occurring to both push that temperature above the target and push it down below the target. So as the temperature rises, the thermostat senses that stimulus, stimulus being the temperature rising, and reacts by opposing that stimulus by pumping in cold air to bring the temperature down. Now as it pumps the cold air in and starts to bring the temperature down, the temperature might start to dip below the target. So then it responds to it by opposing that cold stimulus that it's creating itself by shutting down and allowing the temperature to rise back up again and the cycle continues with the thermostat constantly opposing whichever stimulus is causing the temperature to rise above or below whatever the desired temperature is. Your body works in a very similar way. Your body needs to be at a temperature of about 98 degrees at all times, and your body is working very hard to maintain that 98 degrees even though there's a lot of stimuli trying to push your temperature above or below 98. So how does your body react to that? Because it can't pump cold air in and out like a thermostat, like your air conditioning, like your heater can. So how does it do it? Well, when you get cold, you start to shiver. That's your body's way of trying to raise your body temp. Because by making you shiver, you're moving. It's getting your cells in your body to move using energy, using energy generates heat. So your body's trying to push that temperature back up. When you're really hot, you start to sweat. That sweat, that opening of your pores, that releasing of liquid, that helps cool your body down. That's trying to keep your internal body temperature down as close to that 98 degrees as possible. Because if your internal body temperature drops too low, you'll begin to experience hypothermia, which can and will kill you. And the opposite is true. If your internal body temperature gets too high, it starts to break down. Different parts can actually liquefy if it's really high, like you see in science fiction laser beam shows. Um, so your body needs to work very hard by opposing the stimulus that's affecting your body, causing your temperature to go up or down. And that's it. If you have any other questions about homeostasis, please ask me in class, and good luck.